Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have waited a long time for this occasion because I believe that there is a spirit in this universe that's creating a oneness in God. That there are intelligent people who realize that there is one God and we praise him and we worship him in many ways. The spirit is so wholesome and it's so wonderful and I have an opportunity to introduce you to a gentleman that's bringing to us another condition in this world, a positive one, especially as it relates to our people and what the purpose and our goals are here on earth. I had the honor to be in his presence a while ago and we talked about the wonderful way that some of the people in our cities are being changed just because they're hearing a message and adhering to a discipline and a principle that would be upheld by any decent person. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted and excited to welcome to Bobby Jones Gospel Minister Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> welcome. Thank you so very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I just realized that a few days ago that C-SPAN featured you and I had an opportunity a few days ago to read about the wonderful work that you and your wonderful people have been doing in the cities of Chicago, Illinois, and Washington, D.C., and I'm sure others around the country in helping to eradicate the drug problems and other problems that we have with our people. And may I say to you and all that support you, and God, thank God for you, and I'm delighted that you're doing this. May, may I shake your hand again? Yes. <laughs> but you know what? The oddity of this all is, I'm Christian. And I'm a Muslim. <laughs> Do you know what that means? No, but I believe in Jesus. Well, I believe in Jesus too. I couldn't be a good Muslim unless I believed in Jesus. The word Muslim means one who believes in obeying God. A good Christian couldn't be a good Christian unless we obeyed God. So you see, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. baptism. All right. Huh? <laughs> but you may be Muslim. Uh, I'm black. Well, uh, somewhere along the line, I'm there too. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it wonderful because we have something a lot of things in common, don't we? More in common than we have not in common. I think that those who are out there drinking wine oftentimes have more sense than those who call themselves intelligent because the wino is not interested in the label. The wino is interested in the content in the bottle. Mm -hmm. And so we may be divided by different labels but if we look under the label and study the content, we all believe that there is but one God. We believe in truth. We believe in the hereafter. We believe in the resurrection of the dead and the judgment of the world. But most of all, we believe that this is the time for the poor, the oppressed, the downtrodden to be liberated and uplifted. And since black people in America are the most downtrodden, the rejected, and the despised, we believe it's our time to come from the bottom by God's grace oh, yes. to be lifted to the top. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, yes. And obviously, I believe the same. I wanted you to come and share with us because I knew you believed in those principles. And I think that we often let pettiness divide us. We can't afford to be divided as a people because we have to do our work that, that we were put here to do together as human beings. And what is so little about the division isn't even important in God's eyesight. As long as we live clean lives and we're humble and we obey the rules of God, then we can see his face. Then and only then. I agree. <laughs> so, so you see, brothers and sisters, we cannot afford to let anyone divide us. 
make us dislike, distrust, hate each other, when by nature we are born of God. And since we are born of God, then this man and I, though from a different mother's womb, we are brothers, we are family, and we ought to start acting like a family. As Jesus said, you must learn to love your neighbor as who? As yourself. But if you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. And how can you love yourself if you don't know yourself? And in this world, they have deprived us of the knowledge of ourselves. Therefore, we are the number one beaters, shooters, haters, rapers, destroyers of one another. So we've got to practice that love that Jesus taught. And we've got to start first with self. Yeah. I love you, brother. I love you, brother. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought, what an example we can be to our people. I'm Christian, you Muslim. We're both black. We both have the same concerns. What a wonderful example to the rest of this world to see that we can love one another and yet we can continue the work that we must do together. So I wanted to use Bobby Jones' gospel as a platform to bring love to the world. Uh, that's what I'm all about. That's what Christians are all about. How could I deny an intelligent man as you that have so much information for us, an opportunity, and give us the opportunity to hear what you have to say? Minister Farrakhan, we truly, truly love you, and thank you for taking the time, the time from your busy schedule to come to say hello to us. Bobby, thank you. I think that Bobby is very unique in that Bobby would give me, a Muslim, a chance to express myself uninhibited, not a 30-second bite on television where your message is distorted and corrupted by those who do not wish my own people to understand me or my message. So I would say to all of our brothers and sisters who are listening, if you wanted to know about Jesus, you wouldn't go to Pontius Pilate. And you wouldn't go to Herod. And you would dare not go to Caesar. But if you wanted to know Jesus, you would have to meet Peter, all right. Thomas, John, James, or Andrew, one of the disciples, or meet the master himself, or meet one of those who was touched by the power of his word. And I say that to say this, if you really want to know who I am, All right. you got to meet me for yourself, not through those who hate me because Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if we are not free, then that means that there's a particular truth that we have not yet learned and the enemy knows that God has blessed me to know that truth and therefore they want to put a veil over me so that I would never be able to teach you what God has given me that would free us indeed that we may get on with the business of liberation of ourselves and the whole human family of our earth. All right, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> God bless you. <him. laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> well, you know what? I heard through the grapevine, you know what that grapevine is all about, that you are an accomplished musician, that you played an instrument on television on the Ted Mac Amateur Hour at the age of 14, and you have not played this instrument on television in a long time. Is this true? That's about right. About 40 some years I have not been on television with my instrument and it's been almost uh, 20 years uh, since I have literally played it and every now and then when I feel a little depressed I will pick it up and begin to play. And so I wanted to honor a request made by Bobby that I play for you, but I wanted you to hear me play my instrument without having practiced 
to let you know that what you give up for God, you never lose. How oh, wonderful. Well, I'm going to uh, ask your son. Mr. Farkhan, if he would come and bring this instrument, the wonderful violin. And you be very careful with this instrument. Let's welcome Mr. Farrakhan, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Delighted to see you also. All right. Thank you very much. And, and uh, what are you going to play for us? I would like to play, without the benefit of an accompanist at this point, a cappella, if you will. Meditation from the opera Thais by Mazinet. Since this is a gospel program and meditation is a part of all religious worship, I would like, as I play this instrument, for you to meditate on the power of God to deliver when you don't think you can be delivered. This is an instrument that I do not play. I work 18 to 21 hours a day for the liberation of our people. But as I meditate on my God, who gave me the gift and did not take it from me, you meditate on the power of God who has given every one of you in this television audience and every one of you that are looking by television your own special gift and if you meditate on God he will help you to develop your gift that you in your way and I in mine and Bobby in his may glorify the creator the giver of all gifts ladies and gentlemen minister Lewis Barker
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know that was one wonderful applause for welcoming us back, but I want you to do another one because I'm going to say to you again, would you welcome again Minister Louis Farcon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, those of us that read our holy books realize that they are fulfilling themselves because what's happening all around us is certainly a fulfillment of God's word. He's coming back again, and we think it won't be long. The destruction that's happening around us and all of the many concerns that most people are concerned about in our communities today, one problem especially that's destroying many people, young people in our community. There are a lot of them, but one in particular, the drug problem. And I think it would be remiss if this program did not address this problem, especially since so many of you that are imprisoned today, not just behind the prison walls, but in your homes, in your communities, wherever you are. We need to discuss this problem, and we need to see what we can do as responsible human beings to give some message to those of us that may be hooked on it. And Minister Farrakhan has done a wonderful job in this particular area. Share some of that with me, please, sir. Well, you know, brothers and sisters, I used to think that drugs had no natural need in the human spirit. I used to think that maybe just air, food, and water was what we really needed. But as I began to study the drug problem and why drugs are so pervasive in the world today, America's economy is approximately three trillion dollars. Russia is second with one trillion seven hundred billion dollars. And the worldwide drug market legal and illegal is 1.6 trillion dollars so drugs is also a superpower that is corrupting nations presidents rulers police you name it drugs are corrupting the people but it's not so much the drug but there is an inordinate demand on the part of the people for the drug. If there were no appetite, there would be no need. So what is it that produces the appetite for drugs? You know, whenever there's a traumatic experience in our lives, there's a natural secretion that the brain gives to keep us quiet, to help us get through a storm in our lives. Whenever there's a need for inordinate strength, the brain secretes powerful hormones that give you adrenaline, that give you the strength to jump over a fence or to run extraordinarily fast or to do something that demands extraordinary strength. But what happens when your natural ability to provide what the body needs for natural circumstances of life is depleted because the circumstances of life are so overwhelming that you have nothing within yourself to combat it neither in knowledge nor in faith nor in substance so then you reach outside of yourself and the drug man is there with the reefer, with the cocaine. And many of you who are not on cocaine, who are not on reefer, who are not on heroin, you have to go to bed with a pill and wake up with a pill, but you are all on some kind of drug. But why is this? Jesus said it like this. Know that in the last days there will be wars and rumors of wars and Kingdom shall rise against kingdom and nation against nation. There will be pestilence and famine and earthquake in diverse places, but these are just the beginning of sorrows. What next? 
brother shall deliver up brother there'll be betrayals Paul said in that day there'll be men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God they will be heady high-minded traitors with unnatural affection there will be hatred you see among us as a family so now there's nothing in the head to combat this so the drug man comes in because the world is under judgment and the only way you can get through it is you got to have a faith in God stronger than the need for the drug. And so I say to you, there is no solution to this problem outside of faith in God. And when you truly believe in God and put your trust in God, then He gives you the mental power to go through the trauma of the times. Why, you could have a, a drug seller all outside of Muhammad's mosques and they would go broke because inside we have no need for that. Our appetite is not there for drugs. Our appetite is filled with the wisdom of God and faith in God. And I say that America has to turn back to God in true faith and submission to God. Otherwise, America, like ancient Rome, Babylon, Sodom and Gomorrah, and ancient Egypt, will be the twisted wreckage of another great nation that could have lived out her greatness but she was corrupt and rotten from within because she lost faith in God. I have a song I want to do for you now for all of us who need this strength and this faith. It's amazing. I sing about it. It's grace that brought me safe thus far. Would you help me? Okay. Let's do it now.
that brought me day thus far. And it's nothing but that grace yeah. that's gonna leave. 